Hi and welcome in this new video, hope you're doing well, hope your day is great and stay to discover the new features of Airflow 2.10. My name is Mark Lamati, Head of Customer Education at Aston Mer, best selling tutor on Udemy and if you want to stay up to date with Airflow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, that will help me a lot and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. As you know, you have a few executors that you can use with Airflow. For example, you have the local executor, which is easy to run, very low latency and few requirements to set up. However, it has limited scalability as it runs on a single machine. Then you have the celery executor, which is more robust, relative low latency and it scales. But you can have tasks that compete for resources as they run within the same worker and the celery executor can be expensive as those workers can stay idle for a while before getting new tasks. And last but not least, you have the Kubernetes executor where the tasks are isolated, it is cost effective and you can optimize the resources as you can define exactly what a task must consume in terms of disk, CPU and RAM. However, there is definitely latency on startup to run a task. It can be expensive for too many short-lived tasks. And last but not least, Kubernetes is hard. The point is each executor has its own set of pros and cons, but you must pick one executor and hope that all of your tasks will fit with it. However, we know that in practice, it's not realistic. Indeed, you might have many short-lived tasks that will be perfect for the cellular executor, whereas you can have long-running tasks that need specific resources where the Kubernetes executor will be perfect for that. It's usually at this time that you come across two other executors, which are the Celery Kubernetes Executor and the Kubernetes Local Executor. These executors are great because they combine two executors together. For example, with the Celery Kubernetes Executor, it allows you to run simultaneously a Celery Executor and a Kubernetes Executor. So you can choose which executor to use depending on your task. Let me show you an example. You have a task A and a task B. And also you have a local machine and a Kubernetes cluster where the Kubernetes executor is used. Now you want to run task A on your local machine. For that, you can use the Q parameter with the value local. And then if you want to run task B in Kubernetes with the Kubernetes executor, you can use Q with Kubernetes. And that's how it works. You just need to set the value corresponding to a specific executor for the Q parameter of a task and that's it. The problem with those hard-coded hybrid executors is that they are hard-coded. So their implementation isn't native or intrinsic to core Airflow. It's a little bit hacky, to be honest. They misuse the Q field and make it impossible to use it for its intended purpose. Remember that you should use the Q parameter to better distribute your tasks. For example, if you have a worker, a machine, with a lot of resources and you want to send your tasks to this specific worker, you can do that using the Q parameter. And finally, these executors require to hard code every combination of executors, which is definitely not sustainable. So that's why in Airflow 2.10, you have a new concept, a concept of hybrid executors that are not hard coded. So let me show you what it means. Imagine you want to use the local executor and the cellular executor, which is, by the way, a combination that doesn't exist. Well, with the hybrid executors, now you can specify that as a list of executors for the executor Airflow setting. That's it. Just like that, you will tell to Airflow that you want to use two executors, the local executor and the cellular executor. By default, the tasks will use the first executor in the list, so here, the local executor. And to run a task on a specific executor, well, you just need to define the executor parameter of the task with the executor you want to use. And that's it. It is as simple as that. Task A will run using the salary executor, whereas task B will run on the default executor, the local executor. Last but not least, you can attach an alias to an executor just like that. So instead of typing salary executor, you can type Cluster A. That might be useful if you want to identify where to run your tasks on something else than just on the name of the executor. Okay, the next feature introduced by Airflow 2.10 is truly amazing, but first we need a quick reminder about datasets. So what is a dataset? 
a dataset is a logical grouping of data produced by tasks to trigger DAGs. For example, the producer DAG has a dataset, my dataset, corresponding to a file in a F3 bucket, and this dataset will be updated by task A, as you can see with the outlets parameter. And by doing that, you indicate to Airflow that this task updates the dataset, and if you have another DAG, like consumer DAG, that it is scheduled on this dataset, it will be triggered as soon as task A from the producer DAG successfully completes. While it is great, there is a big limitation here. Indeed, the datasets have to be defined first. So the question is, how can you create a dataset from a task at runtime? I mean, it's pretty common to have a task that fetches, let's say, a file from a bucket, and then you want to create a dataset out of this file. But for a while, you weren't able to do that because all datasets had to be defined first. But guess what? This is over. Now in Airflow 2.10, you have this new concept of dataset aliases. So let me tell you what is a dataset alias. A dataset alias is defined by a unique name and can be used in place of a regular dataset in outlets and schedules. It is resolved at runtime to emit an event of a real dataset. Okay, let me show you what exactly that means for you. Let's say we want to create a dataset based on a file that we fetch from a S3 bucket. To illustrate that, you can take a look at the following data pipeline. Here, we haven't defined the dataset statically in the DAG. But if you carefully take a look at the update dataset task, we've done a few things. First, we import the dataset alias. And then we create a dataset alias object with a unique name, logs, that we pass as the value of the outlet's parameter of the task. Then, by using the outlet events pulled from the Airflow context, we can refer back to the dataset alias, logs, and attach a dataset dynamically. And this dataset has the file path corresponding to the audit logs that we fetched from the S3 bucket. And just like that, you are able to create a dataset dynamically using a dataset alias. To sum up, to create a dataset dynamically from a task, you just need to create a dataset alias first with a unique name, then you attach your dataset to this dataset alias, and then you emit the dataset alias instead of the dataset. That's it, it is as simple as that. Now, there is another way to create a dataset alias, and so a dataset dynamically, which is by using the metadata method. I actually prefer this method. I find it easier to read and to write. So as you can see here, we import metadata and then we yield metadata with the dataset we want to create dynamically and the alias name here logs. And we still emit the dataset alias as you can see in the outlets parameter. Okay, like with the datasets, you can schedule DAGs based on dataset aliases. You just use schedule and you pass the dataset alias with its unique name. Also, you can attach multiple datasets to an alias. And that's what you can see here. I have one alias folder that has multiple datasets attached to it, file one, file two, and file three. If you have a DAG scheduled on this dataset alias, then it will run as soon as one of the datasets receives an update. By the way, if you have a DAG scheduled on a dataset alias, it is normal to see unresolved dataset alias at first, because you need to have the DAG with the task that creates the dataset to run first in order to see the actual dataset behind the dataset alias. Something else that you can do with datasets is that you can attach extra information. For example, let's say you want to add the number of rows to this dataset, file CSV, you can do that. However, I think we agree that it's not really useful because you have to attach this extra information statically. What if you want to attach extra information at runtime? So for example, the number of rows, you actually want to read the file first and then add the extra information to the dataset. Well, in 2.10, you can do that. You just need to use the outlet events from the Airflow context as a parameter of your task. And then from the outlet events, you refer to your dataset, you use dot extra and you pass the extra information. And as you can see here, 
it is truly dynamic. So now the extra information makes a lot of sense. And by the way, you can also do it using the metadata as we saw earlier with dataset aliases. Again, you yield the metadata with your dataset and you pass the extra information at runtime. I actually prefer this method because again, it's easier to read and to write. Now you may wonder, how can I retrieve the information from another task? Well, there are a few things to do. So first you have to use the inlets parameter and you pass the dataset to it. Then as a parameter of your task, you use the inlet events from the Airflow context. Once you have the inlet events, you can refer to your dataset. And finally, you access the extra information from the latest event, from the latest dataset that triggered this data pipeline. Another cool feature in Airflow 2.10 is concat. Indeed, with concat, you can combine results from upstream tasks. So let me show you an example. Imagine that you have three tasks, two tasks to list files from a bucket, provider A and provider B, and one task to download the files. So in order to download the files from provider A and provider B, you will do something like that, download file, then you override the task ID and you expand the task to have as many tasks as files. And you will do that for both providers. But you can do better. Indeed, with concat, you can combine the two lists of file names, so you end up with one list of file names that you pass to download file. And again, you expand the tasks, so you end up with as many tasks as file names. So that's the power of concat. In my opinion, it is easier to read and to write and even to debug your tasks using this method. Okay, before going to the Airflow UI to see the updates with 2.10, there is one last feature that I would like to cover here, which is the branching with task groups. Now in Airflow 2.10, you can set a task group with a branching task by returning the task group ID. So you can have one branching task that leads to a task group or another task group or another task. All right, now it is time to discover the updates on the Airflow UI. And there are a few great ones. The first one that you can see on the UI is this new button to reparse your DAG. So if you want to reparse your DAG without waiting for Airflow to refresh automatically, this is the way to do it. For example, you add a new task to your DAG, you don't want to wait, click on this button. Also, there is an equivalent API endpoint that you can use. Next, if you click on the DAG, so let's say producer, and click on a task like this one, you can see on the right the task documentation. And this comes from the comment that you put under your task in your DAG file. So for example, here you have this task updates the dataset my file txt and that's exactly what you can find here. So this is pretty useful. In addition, just below you have dataset events, which is the list of dataset updates caused by this task instance. So this task produces the following dataset event at this time with this URI myfile.txt. Then you have the extra information attached to the dataset and you can even see which DAG runs have been triggered by this dataset. And if you click here, you access the corresponding DAG run. Speaking of the datasets, the corresponding view has been quite updated. So you can see here the list of dataset events along with their date when a given dataset event was created, the URI, as well as the extra information. You can click on the underlying dataset and then you see which DAGs consume this dataset. Here we have consumer along with the different events corresponding to this dataset myfile.txt. If we go back to the previous page, you have the dependency graph where you can see the dataset along with the dataset alias and how they link your DAGs. So here you can see that producer produces the dataset alias that corresponds to myfile.txt, which triggers consumer. On the next tab, you can get the list of datasets. Last but not least, you can access the dataset events from the graph view. So if we go back to DAGs, then producer and graph, we can see here the dataset along with some information such as the URI of the dataset, the latest dataset event with the source and the triggered DAG runs. Two more updates that I would like to show you. The first one is if you have a task that fails, then you can click on it 
access the logs, and now you have the errors in red. So that might seem little, but it's actually pretty cool, especially when you have a lot of logs, so you will save time just by looking at the red logs. And finally, on the top right corner, you have this little icon, if you click on it, woo! Dark mode, <laughs> pretty amazing, isn't it? So keep in mind, this dark mode is still experimental, so it's not perfect. It will be better in the next releases of Airflow, but at least you have a dark mode. So that's it for the Airflow UI and Airflow 2.10. Obviously, there are other features and I strongly recommend you to take a look at the release notes. For example, you have a new API endpoint if you want to get information on task retries. You can skip the sensors if you use DAG test, so you will save time. And there is a new optimization to end tasks directly from the trigger without going into the worker. But again, I recommend you to take a look at the release notes and also there will be a blog post on the Astronomer website. So I hope you will enjoy Airflow 2.10 and I see you for another video. Take care.